All right, hi, Forrest Black. Nice to meet you. Good morning. Nice to meet you. Um, I'm Lisa Morgan. I'm the host of the Top 20 and also the midday host at Cool FM in Barrie. Have you ever been to Barrie? Yes, I have been through Barrie. Uh, I've, I've driven across Canada like 10 times, so Barrie is one of the stop throughs. Yeah, absolutely. We've got a good, well, we had a good downtown music scene, and I'm sure it will come back once this all passes. Uh, which brings me, I guess, to my first question, like how has this past year been for you as someone who is used to traveling all over? What's it been like for you? Wow, it's been kind of like, I think probably for a lot of people, a little mixed, you know, like at, at one point, I think as an artist, I'm a bit introverted in a lot of ways. So I'm like, this is great. This is fantastic. I get to hang out, you know, hang out with my girlfriend and stay home and create music. But then I think that passes pretty quick. And you're like, man, I really miss people. I really miss like people watching, sitting at a cafe and like just thinking up what, you know, what story is behind the person I'm looking at, you know, and I'm, I'm just really thrilled to get out and being able to see people's faces again without a mask on it. I don't know. I just, these, it's, you end up kind of finding out that there's a lot of little things in life that you really love and really miss. And you're like, uh, so I think there's a lot of looking forward to getting out of this. That's where I'm at right now. Yeah. I feel a little bit the same way of being a bit introverted. People, don't get that when you're on radio. They think, oh, you're just extra, but very much not so. And so I don't mind. Yeah. I feel I don't like mind. I'm loud, but I'm one person. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. But yeah, definitely some things I miss. Um, when you are in a cafe writing a song, um, is it like a story that comes to your head or is it birthed as well out of your own experience or is it a little bit of both? I guess it's kind of like a little bit of both, you know, most of the songs that I write come from real experiences, you know, whether it's a song or a spoken word or anything, it's coming from like something that I'm feeling, but it's like just the other day I was, I was on Sunset Boulevard here in Los Angeles and I saw this old woman and this old man, probably in their seventies or eighties and they were walking hand in hand. And I just like, you know, I'm like a bit of a creep, but I'm like, I take a picture of it. I, I always do this too. So I'm like, when I see like really like old, beautiful people and they're in love, I'm just like, man, I get so full of hope. I'm like, one day I can have that. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I'm like, just not too soon though. They still want to be young for a while. And, um, but I took a picture and then on Instagram, I, I posted it and was like, hey, like, does anyone else like essentially feel the way I feel? I'm like, as I see this and then I think about them, I wonder what's their story? Like, how did they meet? Did they meet when they were young? Were they like high school sweethearts? And then the they stay in love their whole life and if that's the case like how tell us the secret what how do you do that so i think you know sometimes you see people and maybe it causes you to reflect on yourself and reflect on like how you feel about a story and and then from there you know you can write it into a song or whatever it's pretty special have you started writing that song from those that old couple I feel like I already wrote that song. I feel like I have a song called Forever in a Day that I that I released on my last EP. And it's it's pretty much that. It's, it's this just really growing with people, like, you know, finding your person and really just making it such a special thing. Yeah. So I, and it's probably like a reoccurring thing though, because I really love love. I love love stories and love songs. And naturally, <laughs> if you love her, is uh, <laughs> it's all about love. Yeah, and If You Love Her is the one that's on our top 20 right now, and I'm getting a lot of requests for it. Um, that's amazing. Yeah, people that call me go, that song, it's so beautiful, and what is it called, and can you please play it? Oh, um, actually, the first time that I heard it was when I was given notice, like, we're adding it to the radio station. I go, oh, who's this? So I, I watched the music video, and I have to tell you that I was sitting in my little tiny recording booth oh, in no. and I was just <laughs> sobbing. Like, why, why do you make music videos to make us cry? <laughs> That's so good. Yeah, well, th first of all, thank you. Thank you to not only you, your station, but your listeners. You know, at the end of the day, it's what matters is, you know, what people feel and what mm -hmm. people think. And so I feel I feel honored to be a part of the countdown. It's amazing. Um, when it comes to the music video side and, and writing songs that make people feel things, I think that's how I feel. Like I, th that song is a very real song and came from a really real place. And um, I think one of the beautiful things is, you know, what I felt for that song is a little bit different than what's been coming back for what people feel for the song. And I think that's the, the coolest part about it all. Mm -hmm. So for me, I, I, I went through a breakup and I was with a person for quite a long time and it was a little unexpected, you know, and it was like, I was trying to move mountains and I didn't realize that maybe that person didn't need a mountain moved. What they needed was such a small gesture, 
-hmm. like the super, super small things that you think are like things that you can pass on because you need to do the big things. And I I think it's such a, sometimes such a, such a dude thing to do. You know, you're just like, man, oversight. It's like, I'm trying to buy you a house. And they're like, all I wanted was a hug. And you're like, oh yeah, wow. Okay. So for me, I wrote that. And um, when it came time to do the the video, I I have a really good friend of mine in Ireland who's an incredible filmmaker. I called him and said, hey, you know, would you want to do the film for the song? And as we started brainstorming for the song, it was, it's like the story about my version has already been told in the song. What else can we say for this? Because it's not just my feeling. There's a whole other feeling that can you know wrap itself around this. So we told that other story. So if people want to watch the music video, I don't want to give it away so they can go watch it and see. But all that to say, you know, when I go online and I scroll through the comments or, you know, people will text me and like get a hold of me and stuff like that. It's incredible to see what other people feel. So somebody's like, oh man, I, I lost my girlfriend and I feel this. I'm like, okay, that's, I, I feel something similar to that. Mm-hmm. And then someone else will be like, that's my dad talking to me. And this is like, this is my dad walking me down the aisle. And then, you know, the, there's countless people being like, that's me. That's my story. You told my story. That's, and like uh, other women are like, if a guy just listens to this song and he does what's <laughs> in this song, he's going to be pretty good. Yeah. Like, wow. Like, I, 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 yeah, it's just been countless echoes is what I've been calling them. So. It's been pretty, pretty powerful, man. And there's another song of yours. I think it's uh, Where You First Found Me that looks like- Oh, Where I First Found You. Where I First Found yeah. yeah. uh, same, You. Same filmmaker? Yeah, that's that's yeah. my buddy, James, yeah. Yeah, beautiful Ireland, I love. Have you been to Ireland? Yeah, we, we filmed, so both those films were filmed in Ireland. And obviously in the first one, it wasn't, COVID wasn't around. So I got to, it was just like a dream come true for me. I got to fly into Dublin and yeah, it was stunning. Like. We were in Wicklow Mountains and then all through Dublin and really special. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm obviously I'm pale and, you know, red, red and basically a potato. So <laughs> I'm Irish. Yes. So I felt pretty, pretty pumped to get get there and, and, and actually film there. It was pretty amazing. Was yeah. Looking forward to getting back when this is all done. I spent a little bit of time in Dublin, but also in Northern Ireland. And I was shocked at how green it was. It was just yeah. I fell in love and like you, I can't wait to go back one day. I'm excited. I will cheers you when we're over there. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> that, that other video, um, the, the film for the song with a grandfather in it this time. And um, I know that you're saying the different ways that people think about your music and what it means to them. And to have a grandfather in that song with his granddaughter is another one where I'm watching it. I'm like, don't cry, don't cry. And no one sees me, but some days- I'm, try- just- I'm trying to get an endorsement from Kleenex. I keep <laughs> tweeting I keep <laughs> tweeting at them. <laughs> um, <laughs> but what, what does it mean for you to see your song with this different layer now with like a grandparent in it or a parent in it? Um, I know that in what you have online about yourself, you've had a bit of a tumultuous childhood and um, maybe some of those relationships that some people are, are feeling when they hear your songs, you didn't have, but then the videos now, you have a parent and a grandparent in it. What, what does that mean for you as you see the video, the film for your songs? I feel like, you know, these videos or even the songs alike are just representations of of, of shades of certain feelings and you know yeah my, my upbringing was pretty intense but at the end of the day you know I suppose that I used it in the best way possible to get to such a cool place you know I empowered myself through that experience to do something with it because there you know it could have gone right the other way mm-hmm. and unfortunately for a lot of people it does so taking all those experiences and things that maybe I didn't feel and things that I'd hoped to feel or things that I watched other people experience and using those things as almost color palettes to write into songs or movies, you know, or films that I, that I create. I I think it's, it's a pretty special thing sitting back and watching it at the end. It's it's really incredible to kind of look at the art and go, wow, like I made something of this. It's beautiful art. It's really. Thank you. Thank you. It's, It's been pretty amazing. Again, like, I feel like I wake up every single day and I pinch myself and I'm just like, is this really happening? Because, you know, there's a there's a 15 year old version of myself that's really struggling and really beat up and has no clue that 
life will look like this. So, it, you know, it looks like this giant uphill struggle and you have to kind of punch your way up. And it's pretty cool to see it like to come to life this way. Every day is really confusing. You know, like I, I went gold in Canada yesterday. I woke up to a gold record. and I was like, what is happening? Like this for real? Like this is all while sitting in this little box during a pandemic, you know, and called my Nana and I was like, Nana, like I have a gold record, you know? And she's like, I know what that is. Because <laughs> sometimes I call her and be like, this really cool thing happened. She's like, oh, I don't know. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> You can always like you get you get humbled by Nana. She's like, I don't really care. You're, you could be like, Nana, I have a song with Justin Bieber. She's like, well, I don't really know that. Yeah. Like, it sounds like a nice kid. You know, yeah. So, do you have a song with Justin Bieber? No. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> maybe one day. May, may, maybe. Yeah, go and funny. go and stream my song twenty times, and I'll tell okay. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember like is there a turning point in your life that you can pinpoint and say like here is this you know 15 year old kid that's got so many things happening and and you know worried and not sure where things are going to go is there a moment where you can look back and go that was the moment where things turned and um things turned towards this direction where you are now or was it just sort of like imperceptible I think it's I think it's two parts I think it's there are multiple versions of that throughout the course of this you know like you know I, I was 15 years old and homeless and you know I called my nana and I said hey I'm, I'm really struggling can I come stay with you and I was you know as a young man was like really embarrassed at 15 years old to have to ask someone that because I was I was really standing on my own two feet best I could and you know being a young man and um she was like yeah like on the condition you'll go to school you know, and I was in Ottawa at the time and I grabbed a, a via rail train with a backpack and two garbage bags and showed up at her house in Montreal, you know, and so she did. She took me in for the year. That was a really incredible and like pivotal moment for me. But then, you know, one day I was sitting in her basement and like just just trying to catch my breath as a teenager. And she was like, I want to get you a gift. What would you like? And I really didn't know how to answer that question. And I blurted out guitar. There's a long story behind that, but it's kind of the only thing that came to mind. And she went and got me like a knockoff electric guitar. And, and that, that, like, I remember strumming the strings, not knowing how to play this thing and never had a lesson. And it was like, but I feel something. Mm -hmm. I felt something so profound. So I, I think that there've been like, I, when I look back now, you know, like there are all these little moments that poke out and going like, oh, wow, that, what a special moment. You know, or the first time I got my heart broken. Wow, that was pretty special. And, you know, like it, there are all these little things, the good, the bad, the ugly, the everything in between. And you're like, man, these are all these like really profound moments that are turning me into me. But you don't realize that on the on the path, you know, because when a bad thing happens, you're like, man, this really sucks. You know, case in point with if you love her, like, you know, most people wouldn't know this, but here I am signed to the big record label and, and it's, it's wonderful. And I've got a great team of people behind me, but I got my heart busted and, and landed in LA and lived in the back of my car, you know, and was trying to figure out what I was going to do. And that's two years ago. Mm. And it was like, I went from living in a really nice place and ha ha had kind of like a view of what life was going to look like. And then it just from underneath my feet, things changed overnight. And I, and I had to come, I had to go to a place that was kind of, humiliating and embarrassing but in that moment i was like okay well like i remember i remember laying on on the pch which is a pacific coast highway it's like kind of a beautiful highway you always see in movies in california and i was sleeping in the back of this rental car that i had this truck and it was beautiful like you know i rolled down the windows and would listen to the ocean and would just try and catch my breath and i was like okay like like the only way to get through this is through this. Like, what do you, what are we going to do? What's tomorrow look like? Let's get up and let's just try our best. And, mm -hmm. and I just kept telling myself that, and you know, and I, I went and I was working with good friends of mine and I just started writing out those feelings. I'm like, what, are, what am I going to do with all these tough feelings? I'm like, well, I'm a songwriter. I'm, I guess I'm going to write about them. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, that's, you know, if you love you, if you love her rather was born from that moment. So I think like, again, when I, when I, when I go back in time and I look at all these things and like, They've been all these like massive sources of inspiration. I suppose it's just how you look at it. What side, what side of the fence do you choose to be on 
you know, and what do you want to see? And that's anyway, not to be prophetic, but it was like, it was pretty wild. It's been pretty wild. Again, yeah. a lot of, a lot of like waking up and pinching me. Like I'm pinching myself. I get to talk to you guys today. This is crazy. It's so cool. I want to talk about some of your inspirations. One thing that stood out for me in your bio is that you lived in Jamaica for a while and my, mo my mother is Jamaican and I got to live there for two years as a child too. And no way. <laughs> Um, Where? <laughs> uh, Tigo Bay. Okay. Tigo cool. Bay. Uh, so I know you're you were in the grill most of the time, maybe. Yeah, I was in Westmoreland. Yeah. Oh, Westmoreland. Yeah. Okay. Um, I know that the reason that you were there was maybe not the greatest thing, um, being given you know all that was happening in your childhood. But I was wondering, you know, what life was like then. How old were you? Did you go to school? And and any great memories from living on the island oh man there's so many great memories like that place that place was like it was a massive part of my childhood you know because we were there on and off for long periods of time and I, I went to an elementary school there for a bit first school I ever went to was in Jamaica and uh oh, my best you know, like my best friends were Jamaican you know first girl I ever kissed was Jamaican <laughs> <laughs> and like to be honest I didn't really realize I was a Canadian I, I I thought I was a Jamaican we were out grabbing starfish and like you know hustling tourists to make money so we can grab our chicken patties and beef patties from my friend's mom and still to date like one of my best friends is like you know his name's Elton I grew up with him there and, you know and so it was a massive impactful part of my childhood and, and part of my story. And, and it's a place I hold very near and dear to my heart. And uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's so funny because I was, uh, you know, as, as an artist, like you get all these apps that you can go and check, you know, where, what your song is doing here, what, to, how many Shazams it has, all this stuff. And uh, this week I was checking Shazam and I'm, I was number 98 in the top 200 in Jamaica. And I was just like, so good. <laughs> have, they, have they done a remix of that song in Jamaica? No, there's not, none. Yet. not yet. <laughs> Jamaican's love it on me. And I'm like, it's so good. I, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, sec it's my second home. I, I love Jamaica so much. And I love the people down there. I think they're some of the best people. Salt of the earth, like just real, real people. That's so funny. That's you awesome. Gone, I'm guessing that you've gone back since... Oh yeah. I mean, this is the longest I've been away to be honest. So, yeah. but yeah, every, every chance I get to get down there, like it's, again, it's just like, it's like, it's home. Like I, I, yeah, <laughs> I just get it from everything. Yeah. Just my, parents, home. my parents have semi-retired and so they normally go to Jamaica every winter. And I've been taking my kids there for a week in January when tickets are cheap, I'm sure, you know, and the cheap tickets. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, so we didn't get to go this year, but yeah, definitely missing it. My daughter said to me the other day, she's like, mom, this time of year, we would have been on the beach eating Bami in Jamaica. And I didn't yeah. even realize that she remembered <laughs> what Bami was. I'm like, <laughs> gotta get, got get the Jamaican in you. <laughs> That's so good. I know. When I, like some people, you know, the, some people, will quiz me and check me and be like, yeah, did you actually live in Jamaica? And yeah. it's so funny because a lot of people will quiz you through foods. Yeah. And so like, I'll be like, listen, man, it, most people don't know what Ginnip is. And I'm like, oh, I, no. <laughs> oh. you can get it sometimes in the shops in Toronto, but by then it's sort of shriveled. It's, it's right? not even, like, it's not even the same. Yeah. It's not I as good. Or like, I'm like, you're, you're not Jamaican unless you know how to prepare ackee. You know, if you know, yeah. <laughs> you know how to pick ackee from the tree and actually do the thing. I can do that, but I'm not a fan of ackee and salt fish. This is the thing. On my dad's side, I'm Dutch. On my mom's side, I'm Jamaican. And both of those countries, like a lot of fish and seafood, and I do not like seafood. That's, that's okay. Failing on that level. Um, do you have Easter bun for this coming weekend? I mean, can you get no, it? I, we, I, have, I don't have anything. I, To be honest, I forgot that it was Easter. <laughs> You gotta have your Easter bun and the cheese in the can. Tasty cheese. cheese in the can. Tasty cheese. <laughs> yeah. Oh. That's amazing. I feel I feel like this this conversation has completely shifted. We're going down memory lane of Jamaica. You had such a beautiful, like heartfelt about your music, and now it's time to talk about Jamaica. So funny. <laughs> yeah, the people there are are lovely and so kind. Yeah, the, it's very, it's very real. Like you just, yeah. and that's probably that's probably another thing that you know, inadvertently reached you know mm -hmm. into me and, and touched on my music. Like I, I love reggae, reggae music. It's yeah, uh, I think it's incredible. You know, but yeah, and I think just yeah, the way I've always found Jamaicans to be so like open and, and incredibly vulnerable, actually, as people, yeah. very tough people, but very vulnerable people. Well, like, kind of lead, lead with their heart. You know? Yeah. So. Yeah. So, uh, that's awesome. 
yeah, it's well, it's really great to talk to you and find out more about your music and your your life. And I'm very happy as as a mother. My kids are very young, and I was reading your bio, and my heart was breaking. I'm like, this is so not fair. But I'm so happy to see you in a good spot and making such beautiful music and um, having you know a wonderful life right now. So oh, I really appreciate that, and I think. It, every situation I think is pretty relative you know like the worst that happens in your life is the worst that's happened in my life it's exactly it's just a feeling you know so I appreciate the the empathy and you know in the same breath it's like look what's happening in my life because of of all those things I mean, yeah. it wasn't fun to go through at the time that's for sure but yeah you know at least at least I was able to do something with it and that's pretty cool well thanks so much for joining us and for sharing thanks. sharing with us Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Thank you for your time. And thanks again to all the listeners who are listening. If, if anybody wants to text me from, um, from Barry and say, hey, we heard this on the radio, by all means, 310-496-3464. Send me a text. It comes directly to my phone. And I'm literally on the other end going, hey. <laughs>